Hello everybody and welcome back to Wedding Tip Wednesday. So today I'm going to be answering the questions that you have all sent in to me on my Instagram page, Jenny McCarthy 8. Um, so for the last few weeks I've been speaking to wedding experts in the industry, but today I'm going to be talking to you and answering all the questions. So let me start off. Um, so I have a question here uh, from Emma Sheehan and she's saying, any tips for makeup artists taking photos of of their bridal parties on the day. Any tips for makeup artists taking photos of their bridal parties on the day? Yeah, Emma. <laughs> I would always, I'd, I'd always sort of see this happening just even at weddings, at commercial shoots that I do, where naturally enough, you'll get the wedding, um, the, the hairstylist and you'll get the makeup artist as well, wanting to take photographs of their own work. Um, and that's absolutely fine. My tip um, to you all would be, perhaps wait or not perhaps definitely wait until your videographer and your photographer are gone uh, because they will have left um, a good bit in, in time to go up to the groom or to the other half uh, at the ceremony and take photos and videos of them. So maybe use that time uh, to take those photographs and tips. Yes, natural light is everything. So I would always bring um, my bride over to uh, the daylight, over to the window um, and take my photograph there and make sure that the sunshine is not kind of blinding her um because if the sun is actually shining in the window it does sometimes give you um lines under your eyes that are there um but it just you know enhances them that bit more and nobody wants that um so definitely use the natural daylight and wait till the photographer's gone um uh, I have another question here from Kieran. Uh, Kieran, how long is the drinks reception, and how long do the photos take during the, during this time? Great question. Okay, so how long is the drinks reception? Well, it just depends really on what time you're getting married at. Uh, so, for example, if you're getting married at one o'clock um, and you're in a church and your ceremony is going to take a full hour, uh, so, you know, your other half will walk up the aisle to you and probably get to the top of the aisle at ten past one. She will walk back down with you at ten past two, quarter past two. Um and depending on whether you do that meet and greet outside the church door um, will depend on what time you get back to your wedding venue at. OK, so if you walk down the aisle at quarter past two and you do a meet and greet. <laughs> I don't like them because it actually takes up so much time that I would need back at the hotel. Um, but say you do do the meet and greet at quarter past two and you've got 150 guests there. You're not going to get away from the church until three o'clock. And if the ceremony is, or sorry, if the drink, if the wedding venue is half an hour away, you're going to get back to there at half three. And if they're ringing the bell for dinner at half five, by the time you start your photographs, if you arrive back at half three, you'll probably start photographs at about 3.45 and they will take a full hour, if not a little bit longer. So your family, your bridal party, your couple shots, a full hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, and then you have whatever amount of time you have at your drinks reception. The drinks reception normally lasts about an hour and a half to two hours. Um, and you want to spend as much of that time um, as you can at, at the drinks reception. So um, try and be as organised as you can when it comes to having your photographs taken. And you need to sort all of that out with your photographer in advance. OK, so my two main names on a wedding day would be to get gorgeous photographs, which I always do. Thank God. Um, and my second main aim is always to get my couple to their drinks reception because that's where you want to be. And that's where I want to be too, documenting everything else that's happening. Uh, love the podcast, Jenny. Thank you. Um, best time for the speeches. Well, I have my own opinion on this. OK. <laughs> and then I spoke to Tyg from Tankard's Town a few weeks ago and he reckons the best time for the speeches is after the meal. He reckoned if you have the, the speeches before the meal or, you know, after the, the um, starter, that's not ideal. Uh, everybody sort of prefers speeches after the meal because they're hungry when they go into the room, I suppose. And if you do all the speeches beforehand, <laughs> they're going to be even hungrier by the time the food comes around and drunker probably. Um, so, yeah, so he reckoned after the meal. I'd say, I'd say before, but anyway, he reckoned after the meal, but you do need to listen to your venue as well, because they obviously know what they're talking about too. Um, somebody else asking me, so Anne, Anne-Marie Curtin, um, reading gifts, what exactly is in the, in a church wedding? Yes. <laughs> Great question. Um, how long have we got? So a church wedding, um, 
uh, if you're having communion. Some people decide not to have communion in a church wedding, which is absolutely fine. Um, and that is sort of when you get two mixed religions, you know, uh, that, that kind of communion doesn't happen a lot of the time um, then. Or if you want to just make the um, the ceremony slower. But generally there is communion. So uh, what happens uh, at the start of the ceremony is that the, the bride would walk up the aisle, the two of them meet at the top, they go up and greet the, grease, the priest, the priest starts the mass, the unity candles happen, they go back to their individual unity ca- uh, candles happen, they go back down to their seat. Then the first reader gets up to speak. Then there's a psalm don't forget the psalm with a little song. Um, and, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I, I, I really laugh every time the second reader <laughs> gets up to read. They sometimes stand up on the pulpit to read and they're about to say something. And then, you know, the singer starts the psalm and they're like, stand there then like for about five minutes and everyone's laughing. Anyway, tell your second reader to wait until after the psalm. So the first reading, the psalm, the second reading. And then the priest will do his bit and then he'll do the homily, which is kind of like 10 minutes of chat. And, you know, sometimes he makes it <clears throat> personal about the couple or then he can get very holy and he can talk about the first and second reading. But that's called the homily. Um, and then after the homily um, happen, you, you get married, you, you do your exchange of your wedding rings and your vows, which is lovely. Um, and then after that, then communion um, happens. So the gifts get brought up typically by the mothers or by, you know, two people that you choose uh, to bring them up. Then the communion happens. Um, and then after the communion, then, you know, there's generally, um, you know, somebody who will get up and do, you know, an, an after communion reading or poem or whatever. And then that's it. The priest, you know, gives the sign the cross or whatever he does. And then you sign the register. All of that takes a full hour, okay, if there's communion involved. So that's what happens in the church. Um, and don't forget to pick nice music. Somebody's asked me about that and I'll talk about that in a second. So that's the church. Um, now, somebody else asking me, getting married in July, what's the one thing I can do early to avoid the rush at the end? So let's talk about the morning. Yeah. Yes, I love having my chats with my couples two weeks before their wedding because I go through a timeline for the entire day. I know that that sounds like, why would you want a timeline? You need a timeline because it is your wedding, but it's also an event that needs to be organised properly. Um, And if you start your timeline and stick to it for the morning and be on time for the church, I always tell my bride, please arrive to the church if you're getting married at one o'clock. Arrive at the door of the church at one o'clock. We'll do our photos and you will arrive to the top of the aisle by 10 past one. If you don't arrive into the church until 10 past one, you don't arrive to the top of the aisle till 20 past one. And I always say that the bell still rings for dinner at the same time later on. So be on time. So you start your timeline for the morning. Make sure that you've given yourself enough time for hair, for makeup. Please give yourself enough time to get into your wedding dress. Like seriously, how much time have you spent picking this dress um, and going back and forward for fittings and all the rest? But this is the time where you need to take your time. Give yourself 20 minutes getting into your dress. And then after you get into your dress, you need to give yourself some time to enjoy that experience. Give your photographer the opportunity to get some lovely portraits. I love that time. I love spending about 10, 15 minutes just with my bride on the morning of the wedding before we head off to the church. Uh, just to get some nice portraits. And a lot of the time it's quite rushed at that point because either hair has gone over, makeup has gone over, something has happened. Um, But I always give them a time schedule. Like this is what time Jenny arrives at. This is what time I want the bridesmaids and mum and dad dressed for. This is what time we're going to get you into your dress for. This is what time. And and like everything is timed. Um, And I always like to get up to the church then 30 minutes before the ceremony is due to begin because your other half is also getting married. It's not just about the bridey. So just bear all of that in mind. Um, And then if you're on time for the church, uh, decide whether you want to do the meet and greet after the church Uh, and then give yourself time then when you get back to the hotel, just make sure everything is organised when it comes to photographs. Your photographer will hopefully do that with you um, and just make sure everyone knows where they have to be for photographs because that's what kills the time on the day when somebody goes missing. I go, where were you? (laughs) I'm big stick in my bag. So just be organised, okay? Do many people, Ashlyn Conlon, do many people uh, do post photos in the church anymore with family or all just at the hotel? Can I be honest? 
I don't like doing photographs in the church. That's my opinion. I just think it's a little bit old fashioned. Um, the only time I ever do photographs in the church would be um, if it's raining outside and we have children who have come to the church. So nieces and nephews who won't be back at the hotel. Uh, that's the only time I'll ever do it. I really try not to do it because it's, you know, you've got the altar in the background. Do you want the altar in your photos? That's up to you. I try never to do it. Um, children at weddings, what to do? Ooh. So, Cloda Maloney, children at weddings, what to do? I'm assuming that you mean um, there are children going to your wedding. What to do with them? Now, here's the thing. And please listen to me because this is like advice that I'm going to give to you that I, I suppose experiences that I've gained over 20 years of doing weddings um, when there are children at weddings. Um, let's talk about, first of all, if they're the children of the bride and groom. I would always say to the bride and groom two weeks beforehand, oh, so, you know, see if ah, that's gorgeous and all the rest are brilliant. And we have children ourselves who were at our wedding um, and they were old enough to look after themselves. I think Alex is probably seven and a half and that's fine. But if you've got toddlers, if you've got a two year old, if you've got a baby, um, you absolutely need somebody else there to mind those children on the wedding day. Somebody who is not a guest or not a family member. Um, because, you know, if you've got a baby or a toddler, they're going to get overwhelmed. They're going to get really tired after a while and they just won't be loving the day after a certain amount of time. They'll be loving it on the morning, but they get tired. You know, they get whingy in the church. Do you want them crying in the background when you're trying to do your rings and your vows? Do you want a family member having to take them out of the church or a guest to take them out of the church when they want to experience what's going on? Um and then when it comes around to having family photographs done, uh, you might have a baby who needs a bottle, a little toddler who needs, you know, a plate of dinner. Um, and if you have an experienced person there who does this for a living, who goes to weddings and who minds children, you're relaxed and you know that your children are being well looked after. And by God, is it worth every single penny? So that's for parents who are getting married, who have children. If you have children coming to your wedding, and you've got nieces and nephews and they're at that age. So they're from whatever age to like two years of age up to 15. Get somebody who's experienced um, with looking after children at a wedding. Honest to God, it will take complete and utter hassle away from you. They're, they get taken into a different room and you have these people who are dealing with children from all age groups. Uh, and you might have a couple of girls there or guys minding them and doing games with them, puppet games with them, jigsaws with them. They'll do whatever um, and they'll know what to do with them to keep them entertained. But So honestly, if you're having a wedding and there are lots of children going, seriously think about hiring somebody to come along and entertain them. That's like the best advice I can give you. I love going into those little rooms when the kids are kind of off to the side. You know, when I've all my photographs done and kind of documenting what's going on, great crack all together. So definitely. That is one of the biggest tips I'll give you today. Um, <laughs> Jill Murphy, have I ever had to manage a couple fighting on their big day? Now, I'm not telling any tales, but yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so like it is, it, I mean, you don't want your couple fighting on the wedding day, but there are things that happen that, you know, will make you kind of... Um, get narky with each other. Um, so not huge big rows, but they'd be like little digs here and then, here and there. And when that happens, I take the piss out of them then. I'm like, come on now, <laughs> there'll be no nookie tonight. <laughs> but yeah, no, they're definitely, yeah, like we're, we're, we're still, we're madly in love with each other. But yeah, we do row, don't we? Um, I've never had anybody leave, or you know, I've never had, I've always been asked that question. I've, that's probably the most asked question. Um, have you ever had anybody, you know, um, not turn up on the day? I've never had that. Um, but yeah, no, I've had couples have, you know, given out to each other big time. And it's generally the bride giving out to the group. <laughs> uh, Jenny, where did you get your dress from that you wore at the weekend? Oh, I was at the Gossies this weekend. I hired it. Thank God I hired it. I wasn't going out to buy another dress because, uh, yeah, I, d I didn't want another one in my wardrobe that I never wear again. So, um, Marie Hickey, getting married on the 4th of June, 2023. I'm a bag of nerves at walking down the aisle. Ah, and the photos. How do I get over it? Oh, my God, Marie. That's the best bit, walking down the aisle. Oh, my God. I know. And everybody will be looking at you. Stop overthinking it, you know. Um you know, just don't overthink it. Start enjoying um, 
you know, the idea of walking down the aisle and everyone looking at you. You've, you have, you're, you've had your hair, your makeup done. You're in your wedding dress. You look amazing. One of the, one of the, um, tips I would give is that when you're walking, I can't do it now because I'm not standing up, but some people think, oh God, what if I fall on the dress? Um, it's never happened in all of the weddings I've done, a couple of thousand weddings, I'd say at this stage, 20 years I'm doing this, like I said earlier on. If you kick your dress as you're walking up the aisle, just kick, kick it away from you. Um, you won't, <clears throat> pardon me, you won't fall on it. And, you know, whoever's walking you up the aisle, you know, link them and then hold your bouquet down at your tummy. Uh, and you will be absolutely fine. And just look ahead at your hubby or your other half to be. Um, yeah, just kind of keep them in your eye line if you don't want to look at anybody else. Just just look at them and enjoy it and breathe and try not to cry. Try not to cry. I love the crying. <laughs> um, planning to get married in two years. Uh, when do you think I should start skin prep? Thank you. Now. Skin prep, prep should start now. Um, we had the lovely Bran went on a few weeks ago from Clarins. And if you didn't hear it, do listen back because she gives the most epic advice on skincare. Um, you know, the longer you're looking after your skin, the better it will look on the day. Um, oh, great question. Fenland 10, whoever you are, you should, who should you have in the house on the morning of the wedding? siblings or not? Well, do you get on with them? <laughs> Some of us don't get on with our siblings, you know. Um, uh, I would say whoever you have chosen to be by your side on your wedding day, your bridal party, your bridesmaids, your, you know, um, your parents will be there if they're around because my poor daddy wasn't around when I got married. He passed away when we were all very young. But anyway, so parents and your bridal party and if you get on with your siblings, have them there. There's, you don't necessarily have to have them all there because your photographer, well, I certainly don't start focusing on family photographs before the ceremony begins because I do that all later on when we go back to the wedding venue. So um, if you get on with them, have them there. Um, they don't necessarily have to be there. What I would say is, you know, and I've often been in houses where the bride goes back home to get married and mum has all the neighbours in, get rid of them. Don't have them in the house because the more people in the house on the morning of the wedding, the more stressed you're going to be. So try and keep yourself nice and calm uh, would be my advice to you. Uh, I just love this podcast. Thank you. Oh, I love doing it. Um, I look forward to it every week. I'm a September 2024 bride. Oh, no question. Thank you. <laughs> um, how to orchestrate the, the photo of confetti throwing outside the church. Great question. Now, I wait until... Um, everybody has so so. If you are doing the meet and greet, uh, what I would suggest is that you do your meet and greet because you're going to be the first ones walking out of the church, okay? And everybody walks down the aisle after you, so you'll meet and greet everybody coming out. And I I always orchestrate that. So, um, say for example, they they say, "Oh, we'll have confetti outside." I would get the bridal party and the family members. Uh, outside the church and I have two lines of them so they're both facing each other okay and I'll have the bride and groom at the church door uh, and I'll just get everybody to sort of face each other um, probably have about 20 people you know there's no need to have any more than 20 people because you're only going to get about five or six photographs or one really good shot of this uh, outside the church because some, sometimes when the confetti has been thrown there's so much of it that Sometimes you can't see the couple's face. So this is like motor drive stuff on my camera. So I'm walking backwards as, it's, as it is happening. So um, bridal party and family, after you have finished your meet and greet, whoever is going to coordinate that should start coordinating it um, just as you're finished the meet and greet. Get everybody in a line. Make sure everybody knows they're doing the confetti shot. Get them in a line. And it just takes not even two minutes to do um, once it's organised. But it has to be organised in advance. Make sure um, you have a good go-getter. I always have two good go-getters on the day, meaning one person from either family will help me out. Um, managing parents who cannot be in the same room. Oh yeah, okay. <laughs> I think in my next life I'm going to be a psychologist because I could win an Oscar sometimes for my performance on a wedding day. <laughs> I've had parents who just cannot even look at each other um, on a wedding day. And I would always say to my couple, how important is it for you uh, to have both of your parents in the same photo? Is it essential? Do they not talk? Why do you want them in the same photo? 
Uh, I know that one is your mum, one is your dad, but they don't want to be in the same photo. They don't get on. They don't like each other. So why would you put them in a photograph together? Um, I would also speak to them separately and say, look, mum, look, dad, this is my wedding day and I don't want to feel stressed on the wedding day. So can you please just kind of get it together? I'm not asking you to be loving each other on the day, um, but can you just manage your behaviour? Um, and just, you know, don't, um, just don't put them together. Like I, I get asked this about the top table as well. Do we have to put them at the top table? No, you do not have to put them at the top table. Who do you have to put at the top table? That's not a question. I'm just going to give you the answer to it. Um, for example, recently, my son got married uh, last June and I loved what they did. They, the two of them were sitting at their top table, which was in the middle of the room, which was lovely, a roundy table with everybody else around them. And they had their bridal party with them, which was like a great idea. And myself and Martin sat with Martin's family and the rest of our kids at one table. Actually, it wasn't the rest of our kids because they were all at the bridal party, but with Martin's family. Um, and it was just good fun and there was no pressure. So if you have a situation like that where you're worried about putting parents at a top table who don't get on, don't put them there. OK, uh, is it OK to give your photographer a list of important shots? Absolutely. The amount of people that come into my studio and say to me, oh, Jenny, we tried to get you for our wedding, but you're already booked. Oh, God, if I descend for every time I heard that. Um, absolutely. So what I would always do, uh, and I would be very organised when it comes to wedding. I have my Zoom call. I'm having a Zoom call tonight, actually, with a couple who are getting married on Saturday. Um, and I will go through the logistics of the day on the call to them. What time I arrive, what time I leave them that evening and everything that's going to happen in the middle. Um, so I would talk to my bride and my groom. I'll talk to my bride first, maybe, and uh, ask, you know, well, I, I already have on the list, kind of from her booking form, who are the family members. So your mom is, your dad is. Oh, you have a sister called Jane. Does she have a partner? Oh, who's her partner? Oh, John. And do they have any children? Great. And then I write down the siblings and who their partners are and if they've got children. And I do the same on the groom's side. And then I go down then to the bridal party. Oh, you've got another Jane. <laughs> and is Jane bringing anybody to the wedding with her on the day? And you can sometimes see the bride going, yeah. And I go, it's not because I want them in the bridal party. It's I just love to go around afterwards when I'm documenting what's going on. I like to get a little photograph of each of the bridal party couples uh, with their with their other half because sometimes the other half of the bridal party feel a little bit left out because the bridal party are gone for a little bit of the day having photos taken. So I would always find out who is who. Uh, and the amount of times that I would hear um, people coming into my studio saying, I never got a photograph with my mum in the morning. And the photographer didn't get a photograph of my dad seeing me in my dress for the first time. Like, seriously, everything that you want photographed on the day, give to your photographer. Now, be careful as well that you don't give your photographer um, an A4 sheet of extra photos that you want later on, because then you're not going to get any time at your drinks reception. So besides the family um, and the bridal party photos and your couple photos, have a good think about who else you'd like to be in an official photo with. You know, you might have a couple of groups of friends. Do you really want a professional photograph of those? Are they photographs that could be taken later on on your smartphone? Have a think about it because the more time you want to be having photographs taken with people, the less time you will have at your drinks this afternoon enjoying it. Um, just a couple more questions because we're running out of time. Um, alternatives to bridesmaids walking up the aisle ahead of the bride. Um, I've got very shy bridesmaids, different ideas. Look, I've never had a situation where they they don't walk up the aisle Um and, you know, bridesmaids can get very, very nervous and that's OK. And if you're very nervous bridesmaids and you feel like, oh, there's not a possibility to walk up the aisle, I'll have a, I won't, I'll collapse halfway up. Um, then you don't need to walk up the aisle at all. Like if, if, if you want your bridesmaids to be already up at the top of the aisle when you're walking up the aisle, that's fine. So before the, the music starts, um, you know, uh, and the doors open at the end of the aisle and the bride's about to walk in, that's normally when the bridesmaids walk up. So before that happens, make sure your bridesmaids go in and they're in the top uh, row ready for the walk up the aisle. So that's kind of an alternative that you could use there. But generally, you know, when it comes to the day, they're fine. I've had I've had one particular bridesmaid who was having anxiety about it on the morning. And I just took her to the side and I said, do you want a glass of Prosecco? <laughs> like, or, or do you want some rescue remedy? And, and how bad is this? Do you feel 
that you're not going to be able to do this. And she said, I'm just going to decide when I get to the church, got to the church and she walked up the aisle. But that was an option that I had given her to, to go up there and stand. Um, here's a question that I've had uh, sent to me a couple of times. And this is going to be my last um, question that I'll answer today because uh, we are going to be doing this again next month. And um, ways to remember a loved one. My groom's uh, father has just recently passed away. I am very sorry to hear that. Um, that's from Claire. Claire, um, you know, my dad had passed away when we got married. We got married 11 years ago and my dad had passed away a good long time ago. Um, but when you're getting married, it doesn't matter how long that parent is gone. They're missing, you know, and it's... Um, God, I've got goosebumps even talking about this. I, you know, you, you want them there and they're not there. I do believe myself that they're there in spirit. So there's a couple of ways that you can remember them. And I think one of the really lovely ways to remember them is to, um, you can get these little pictures. Um, I might actually start doing them in my product range uh, uh, soon because they are beautiful. <clears throat> it's, it's almost like a little brooch for your groom um, with dad's picture on it. Um and there's a little safety pin on it. And what I would always recommend is get something like that for him. That's a really lovely picture of his dad. Um, and what I would always do for my groom is kind of photograph that in his hand, you know. Uh, but then I would put it on the inside of his jacket, close to his heart, on the left side. Oh God, I've got goosebumps, God, when I think about it. Because, you know, that can be in a, a very emotional time on the morning of the wedding um, for your groom. So that's a lovely way to remember him. Another lovely way to remember him is to light a candle for him at the ceremony. That's really, really nice. That's what I did for my dad. My brother actually lit a candle for my dad before I walked into the room because I just knew we got married in a hotel. And uh, before I walked into the room, he lit that candle because if he had lit the candle when I was there, it would have been a blubbering mess. And we got that candle actually afterwards and I asked the hotel to put it on my top table so that that candle could be burning during the whole meal. And I sort of felt that my dad was there. So there are a couple of ways that you can remember a loved one uh, who has passed and I hope that that's been helpful to you Claire and I hope that's been helpful to other people because I know from the weddings that I shoot there are people that you would love to be there at your wedding but unfortunately they have uh, passed away uh, and that's it from um, this week's wedding uh, podcast Wedding Tip Wednesday podcast like I said I'll be talking to you again um, in about a month's time and um, thank you so much for sending in all your questions <laughs>